the most effective and least expensive bactericidal mouthwash. What we're talking about is sodium hypochlorite, which is the active ingredient in household bleach. The Center for Disease Control has recommended for years that sodium hypochlorite be used to render contaminated water potable or drinkable. And the mixture that they recommend on this is one fourth teaspoon to a gallon of water. Now that is very diluted, but that tells you how impactful sodium hypochlorite is and how effective it can be. The research on this that I'm familiar with is done by Dr. Jorgen Slots, and this is an article that he published several years ago. And he recommended 0.05 solution of sodium hypochlorite as an oral rinse. Basically, this was prepared by placing uh, one teaspoon in 16 ounces of water. And you want to use plain and unscented sodium hypochlorite. Now, disease versus periodontal health. Now, in periodontal disease, I think his recommendation, one teaspoon to 16 ounces of water, is fine. But in my mouth, or in a healthy mouth, I think one teaspoon to 32 ounces of water works quite well. Let's talk about some practical considerations on this. Can be used in a water jet or water irrigator to treat pockets or residual periodontal defects. But if you do this, care should be taken when using the water jet for the splatter can cause bleaching of clothes. To avoid frequent mixing, perhaps you should consider taking four teaspoons to a gallon of water and using it over a greater period of time because I think this will make your solution last longer and you won't have to mix it up so frequently. Always use a measuring spoon. Here we see on the left a teaspoon and you do not want to use a tablespoon because you don't want to mix it that strong because more or stronger is not better. So in summary, one teaspoon of plain unscented sodium hypochlorite to one uh, quart of water. How do you use the solution? First of all, use about an ounce or perhaps even less of the solution, put it in your mouth, and swish it between your teeth after brushing and flossing. Gargle to kill the bacteria and viral pathogens in the posterior part of the mouth, especially the posterior third of the tongue. Expectorate the solution, but do not rinse. Now use the tongue sweeper, which we will talk about in the next video, to scrape the posterior third of the, of the tongue where most of the residual bacteria are left after you brush and floss. And then vigorously rinse with plain water. And in case you inadvertently might swallow some, I think you need to drink an eight ounce glass of water either before you use the solution or certainly afterwards. But the disclaimer is, this information is being provided for educational purposes only, and the solution should only be used at your own risk. Second, this is not a prescription, and as I said earlier, the solution should be used at your own risk. Under no circumstance should it be swallowed. Children not, do, should not use this solution because they may inadvertently swallow it, and obviously expectant mothers or women considering becoming pregnant should not use it. Here are some of the side effects of ingesting uh, sodium hypochlorite. Drinking bleach can cause effects that range from mild to serious, depending on the amount ingested. Medcare Medline Plus states that the consuming of diluted bleach or sodium hypochlorite may lead to mild stomach irritation. Ingesting larger amounts can lead to gagging, a gagging sensation. It also may cause pain in the mouth or the throat, burning in the esophagus, chest pains, low blood pressure, slow heart rate, delirium, coma, shock, vomiting, 
and stomach or abdominal pain. Now let's talk about a controversial search, uh, subject because we've already talked about the use in a water irrigator or water jet. And how effective is the water jet in removing plaque? First of all, let's talk about bacterial plaque and let's begin with the acquired pellicle. This is a thin protein containing film derived from salivary glycoproteins. But interestingly enough, it can be used, removed by brushing, but it begins to reform within 30 seconds. Bacterial plaque. Uh, when bacteria attach to the acquired pellicle, this becomes bacterial plaque. Now, the impact of the oral irrigator, let's look at a, systemic, a systematic review. First of all, they reviewed 914 articles, and it appears that... Uh, that the water jet will not remove visible, visible plaque, but what it does do, it improves gingival health by flushing out the toxins and so forth and so on. And this was an article published in 2008. By using the water irrigator on periodontal residual defects, the solution is forced deeper within the defect for disinfecting purposes. The question arises, does this solution degrade and break down over a period of time? Quite frankly, I don't know. But basically, I will use up an entire quart before I go ahead and mix a new solution. And when I use this on a daily basis, I do not form any pal plaque. And when I scrape my tongue, nothing comes off the tongue. Now, if you start using the solution and get to the place where it's effective as I've discussed, but then you begin to have plaque on the tongue, then I would certainly empty it and start again. Hopefully you will use this as one of the components of oral decontamination. Let's talk about how we mix the sodium hypochlorite. First of all, you need your sodium hypochlorite. Second, you need your quart jar. You also need a measuring cup, and this is significant, and you'll see why in a minute. And then you also need measuring spoons. Measuring spoons. Now, let's look at this. Look at this one, how large that is. That is a tablespoon. This is a teaspoon. Be careful and not use a tablespoon. Use a teaspoon. Now, one of the things I found out, if you try to take this and pour it in a teaspoon, it spills all over the place. So let me show you a little trick that works on that. You take some of the sodium hypochlorite, pour it into the mixing bowl like that. Now watch exactly what I do with my teaspoon so I can precisely measure that. I take and dip this in there and take out exactly one teaspoon, dump it in here, take one like this and dump it in there. Now the advantage of doing that is you get exactly two tablespoons or one tablespoon depending on what you want. Now remember, I'm a heavy plaque builder so I use two teaspoons but for you who are not heavy plaque builders and do not build much plaque, certainly one teaspoon to a quart works well. So this is how you mix it. Good luck and have a healthy, clean, sweet-smelling mouth.